Uh, it's Benjamin Douglas Ray with another edition of Sustainable Cannabis TV. This show is brought to you by U.S. Cannabis Pharmaceutical Research and Development, Sustainable Cannabis Coalition, and BuzzFeed, and last but not least, H Saints brand organic hemp CBD products. I'm here with Tiffany Dewberry. She is a cannabis brand lifestyle educator. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here. Um, I'll try not to talk too much, which I tend to do, but it's only because I'm excited and passionate about this, you know, about cannabis. Oh, and, you've got, um, got a lot of great information. And, and I'd like you to start by telling us how you got into this, but really what your background is and where you're, where you're, where you're situated today and give us some background. All right. And I'd love to. Um, my husband always says she has no problem with talking about herself. But, <laughs> um, you know, I am um, I'm someone who is definitely motivated by passion and purpose. Um, did I know what my purpose was uh, about eight years ago? No, um, I had a very successful, uh, you know, corporate sales career, but I was just wasn't, wasn't happy. I did very well. But every couple of years, I just it was just not exciting to me anymore. And I just never you know, put my finger on it. Um, you know, one day, unfortunately, I lost my sister-in-law, 41 years old, um, to cancer within six months of being diagnosed. Mm. And uh, yeah, that just really, that allowed me to, you know, basically, I felt like somebody's tapping me on my shoulder and said, yeah, now like what's time. important in life? Yeah. You know, what matters? What is the decision to make? Yeah. So with some help from the alchemist, I tell everybody, this is always going to be a part of my story. Um, that provided me a change of mindset. That provided me a sense of accountability. And I realized that we all have a purpose within this universe. What I like to say is we're one big puzzle piece, um, big puzzle, and we all are little puzzle pieces and we all have our, our you know purpose and we all have our part to do. I've always felt that I was meant to do something that was gonna leave a footprint of significance um, in a positive way in the lives of others. And I went to work one day and, um, you know, just kind of sat down and was going through the motions. And next thing I know, it was clearing off my desk and writing up my resignation letter. And I called my husband and he says, I've been waiting for you to do this, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but remember, I'm a teacher, so get that budgeting down. But, um, you know, when, when something is your purpose and when you have a, a newfound sense of um, a strategy to go along with, everything kind of falls into place, especially when you just kind of let go and let that control go, which I always had a hard time doing. Mm. Um, but one day it just came to me to be able to get into cannabis. Um, I have lived a cannabis lifestyle for years. Uh, multiple sclerosis lives with me. Mm. I don't like to say I have it. We don't manifest anything. We don't claim anything that's not necessary. Um, but I was di diagnosed in 2006 mm. and I'm healthy and it's all due to, you know, being as healthy as I can. I do like craft beer, you know, but, um, you know, the occasional craft beer, but cannabis has definitely helped me to be a better person. Oh. Um, it has also helped me to find my purpose. And so I feel like I have a platform, you know, I have a platform to be able to help others. Um, and so, yeah, the Mary Jane Maven was born. Did, so did, did cannabis find you or did you find cannabis for the purpose? No. I found cannabis uh, in college. Um, I uh, went to UC Davis and, you know, I, I will admit my parents are okay with this now because they can't deny it. But I remember finding their shoebox top way back in the day with their little roach clip and the feather on it. And huh. so I never touched anything, you know, when other people experimented because my dad's six, seven, very intimidating. That was <laughs> enough for me. Um, so once I got into college and I met my husband, um, you know, it was just kind of, Something I never thought. I was like, people in Davis? What? The really smart? The eggheads? They smoke? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I was diagnosed, it definitely went from being recreational um, to, all right, let's see how this is going to play into my life and how it's going to help me live the quality of life that I always saw for myself. Um, uh, yeah. Super, super positive uh, you have. I love it. You know, it's uh, it's motivational, inspirational, really. Yes, I I am inspired by so many people every day. I am just a naturally passionate dreamer, you know, so I always look for the best and I always want the situation to be the best. So finding inspiration every day is something that's super important to me. So I hope to be that to, to others. And so, yeah, I, um, I want to share my story and, and be able to help others completely 
eradicate the Jeff Spicoli, you know, you're not good to, you're no good to society if you utilize cannabis. It's mm. a flower. So, um, power flower, excuse me. Um, so we should all be able to utilize it to elevate, you know, our wellness and our quality of life as we see fit. That's great. Well, let's get into a couple of questions that I have for you. Nice. So, you know, a lot of cannabis companies trying to figure out what to do. And, you know, I, I know that it's important to you in terms of talking about the responsibility of these brands to create equity. Can you mm -hmm. get into that a little bit? Yeah, you know, something that I wasn't really aware of. I always knew that we were the most, dis, you know, disenfranchised as far as the, um, you know, people of color, um, women, you know, especially, mm -hmm. and not being able to really see a successful career or an industry that's ours to fruition. Um, but getting into the industry, starting with networking, I started hosting my own events, and then I started doing educational events. It became blaringly obvious. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm in Sacramento and Sacramento was one of the counties within California that was, you know, were provided the, the funding to start their equity program. I immediately noticed that there was uh, there was some issues. You know, we um, we weren't, excuse me, utilizing like Colorado, for example, to try to do it the right way. I felt mm -hmm. like a lot of counties said, oh, let's do it the wrong way first. That mm -hmm. seems right um and it's at the detriment of the industry and to those who want to be a part of it um so it's super important for us to be able to give back to the community that has seen the most you know criminal offenses um has had families broken apart um you know have who have not been able to stay in a family home maybe because their area became a you know gentrified or what it may what it may mm -hmm. be, whatever it may be. Um, so it's super important for us to be able to provide this opportunity. I don't want to say like reparations, but I do want to say to be able to provide the opportunity per, to, to get that social equity that we need mm -hmm. so much within our society. So being that this is an industry that can make people, you know, be able to pass money down and pass businesses down to throughout the generations, it needs to be equal for our parts. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, going to networking events and being the only woman of color and seeing who was there, who was investing, who, you know, were coming up with their brands together. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm just leaving corporate sales and I'm jumping right back into it. And I left that day hmm. just resolute in a, in a mission to have my part or to play my part in kind of alleviating that and making it an even playing field. The, um, so how have you done that so far? You know, I um, started off with informational services and events. I like to I like to call them a backyard kind of networking event where everybody could get together, be themselves, um, you know, medicate, um, elevate together, collaborate. And that was called the Colors of Cannabis. Hmm. So I held a couple of events. Um, it's hard to believe that we lost a whole year. I was going to say last year, but yeah, it was the year prior to that. Um, and I worked with the equity program to be able to qualify people and get them into their next class. Mm. Um, I've taken it upon myself to really allow myself to be known within the community. Um, and that is going to those businesses, to those brands that their main you know, mission is to provide that equity, to work with women, um, women of color. So creating relationships with them. Um, joining an organization called Eden, Eden's Gathering. We bought the Women of Weed movie here in 2018. Yeah. Not so long ago. Um, but that kind of really started and, and um, being able, I saw the ball rolling with the connections that I was making and the understanding that I was getting about the program, what it was lacking, and then how much farther we actually had to go for it to be what it is today, which is, it's a success. It's turning out some fantastic, you know, women uh, and black women brand owners. It's, it's, it's really inspirational. You know, what I like about what you're saying is that you're not waiting around for things to change. You're just saying, I'm going to do this. So mm -hmm. you're, you're, you've empowered yourself to say, yeah. if I want change, I need to make it happen. Yeah. And through that, you will help other people to do that. Thank you. Yeah, that's my goal. I don't let somebody talk to me and say, you know, I beg brownies and I go, hmm, have you ever thought about infused baked goods? That's just the way that my mind works. I'm always trying to help somebody else to go through the same journey that I went through a few years ago. It feels so good when you really know 
what your purpose is and you're motivated by passion in that. And I'm just, I'm so motivated. I mean, one of my biggest successes that I've got my grandmother and my mother, very religious, very religious family, both on, you know, some nice one-to-one -one CBD, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to change their mind and for them to even say, okay, I'm going to let her give me this, this spiel for them to even make that decision and then decide, yes, let me try this. That's something that it continues to motivate me because I want others to be able to get their grandmothers and their mothers and their, you know, fathers, um, get them off of that big pharma and help them to live, you know, a much longer and healthier life while they're here. Well, it sounds like you're leading in the space for sure. So keep, keep that, keep that up. Well, another, another part of, you know, being a great leader that I've talked about is education and, you know, I'd like to ask you about how education can play a role in destigmatizing really the industry and, and what your thoughts are about that. Yes. Um, sitting down and creating my brands, I knew that I needed something to kind of just get my point straight across. Um, so the Mary Jane Maven and our kind of tagline is educate, eradicate and elevate. Hmm. And in order for anybody to alleviate any kind of you know falsehoods they you have to be educated you have to receive the proper knowledge and so once people understand that this plant grows it grows naturally um it's been around way before any of us were ever thought of mm -hmm. um and it provides nothing but benefit upon benefit then you know people will start to to shift which we've seen you know i think cbd and introducing that was pretty smart you know it was a good way to get to get people to say oh well I've been smoking CBD for a while and now I'm going to go ahead and go to the dispensary and get one of those. What are that concentrates? I'm going to dab, you know, people really are feeling more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to provide that education also will provide the opportunities. Like I said, to eradicate, I always say Jeff Spicoli because he's probably one of the, the greatest yeah. like potheads that we know, yeah. you know, in, in history. Um, but to just really let people know that we can be an integral part of society. I'm a mother. I have, I, I know it's going to shock you. A 23 year old, um, a 12 year old and a nine year old, all boys. Mm. And it allows me to have the patience that I need. Um, my husband and I, cannabis couple, we, we communicate better. So, I, you know, I, I understand how it can elevate your life and, and elevate your wellness. Mm. Um, but we can't do any of that. We can't, you know hopefully make it federally legal one day, um, you know, be able to go to your 7-Eleven and go to the, you know, go to the machine right there yeah. next to the red box. Um, we're not going to be able to do any of that. We're not going to be able to provide opportunities for careers and for entrepreneurs, you know, to, to get their leg in and get their foot in the industry if we don't start with education. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, how do you think that education plays a role in, let, let's say your, your, kids growing up, you know, mm -hmm. what age and how, how do you address that? So we do as I say, not as I do. We don't hide it. It's medicine. Um, my 12 year old, I say he's like 70. He's a very old soul. Mm -hmm. um, he understands that mom uses it to, you know, to help out, to keep her healthier, to be able to dance with him at his wedding one day. Um, and I just, I feel like being honest, kids, kids are, much smarter than what we were. Um, they are a lot more resourceful. So it doesn't make any sense to give them a, you know, a, a false picture, you know, of what it is and how cannabis can help. Now, that being said, I, you don't you dare like my 23 year old, can we, can we do what together? No, we cannot go ahead and go in the backyard. I'm going to act like I don't even know what you're doing. That's just not uh, that's just not part of our relationship and how I'm setting up my authority with them as a parent, but they do understand some bad things can happen, but that's because that person is unfortunately not accountable. Um, you know, they're, they're probably going to go through some rough times in their life. It's no, you know, it's not any fault of, of cannabis. You can't say that, you know, using cannabis is going to make somebody just, Oh, you know what? I'm giving up on, on everything, all hopes and dreams. Um, so just having a very honest conversation with them about it, um, you know, we put it up, we do everything that we need to do just as parents should with alcohol, just as parents should with their Xanax, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it allows me as an educator, one, they look at me like I'm just 
cannabis wonder woman. I mean, we're driving down the, the highway and my the nine-year-old goes, mom, there's your business. And it was, I think it was Viola. And I was mm-hmm. like, no, no, no. <laughs> I wish, I <laughs> definitely wish that Al Harrington had brought me in on that. That's not, you know, that's not my business. But just the fact that they correlate me with the cannabis industry and the fact that I'm trying to help others live a better life. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they have a good understanding. You know, it's interesting. I have kids too that range from 10 to 27. Mm-hmm. And and when I relate it to what you said about alcohol, it is a bit different uh, mm-hmm. still, you know, I mean, because there is that 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 feeling that it's still not okay, not, mm-hmm. not as much as alcohol. So yeah. you know, when you said you wouldn't have, uh, you know, a, a joint or, you know, or, or partake mm-hmm. with, your, with your kids, mm-hmm. um, would you have a beer though with, with the 23 year old? You know, when he turned 21, I went and bought a bottle of Patron and I was like, let's go ahead and take the shot together, which is something my mom did, mm-hmm. um, you know, with me. And it's all about responsibility. Yeah. Um, I've never been one to, like I said, hold my tongue or lie to my children because I would hate what the outcome would be once they found out or what yeah. their behavior would be. Um, I saw a lot of that. I went to, I went back to college a little, almost about 23. And I said, you know, when I had my son and I was like, whoa, this is what happens, you know, when somebody's 18, 19, 20, and they're, they're out on their own for the first time. So I was able to make a very conscious decision on, you know, to how I was going to communicate and how my communication would build the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, Now I told him, when you get your own house, you and your wife invite us over for a barbecue or whatever. All right, let's go ahead and sit in your backyard and you can have yours and I'll have mine and we'll be in the same vicinity. But not until I feel like you're doing what you need to do as a young man and as an adult. Makes sense. Here's a here's a comment here from Kate. I'm going to read this. Kids uh, endocannabinoid system isn't fully mature till 21. So mustn't mess with it. Uh, You know, frontal cortex, there's a whole bunch of studies around that. So I agree with that. That that what do you think about that? Oh, 1000 percent. I was just on another podcast and, you know, he a great guy, but he definitely had those basic questions that everybody had, you know, is it, is it gateway and whatnot? Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me the question about children using it. And I said, absolutely not, because they are not, you know, they're not mature enough. They're not mature um, biologically. Um, You know, and I'm even say past the age of 21. Like I said, my husband was in a fraternity. I was at UC Davis with a bunch of, you know, 21, 22 year olds. And I don't know if they were quite developed yet, but well, um, I, think for, I think for girls, it may be 21 for boys. It may be 24, yeah. 25 yeah. in terms yeah. of their brains, mm-hmm. you know, being sure. able to accept it. And even though it isn't, uh, you know, the it's uh, THC isn't chemically dependent. You can definitely get addicted to it by, by getting high when you're younger and not having the capability yeah. to be responsible and accountable for your actions around 1,000%. That. And I mean, and look at the way that, you know, people utilize it now. If they do smoke it, it's usually rolled up in a tobacco leaf. Um, you know, there is becoming a bigger push and more brands that are coming out with healthier alternatives. But I can't tell you if I'm, you know, at the gas station, how many, you know, kids come in and spend $10 on a pack of backwoods, which is just not healthy. Yeah. But I can't talk because, you know, my husband and I used to have like a 60 pack of Swishers back yeah. in the day, way back in the day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it there's so many different things that the proper education, especially to that age group, all the way up to baby boomers and, you know, kind of beyond, um, how imperative it is to give them education that's prevalent to them, the time that they're in in their life. And then as they continue to grow, they're able to take that information, add on to it, you know, and and get a right idea about the, the plant. Because, you know, there are some b- very beautiful things. And I think that one day everybody will utilize cannabis for back pain, for, you know, migraines. It's, yeah, it's definitely going to be something that people aren't going to be shy about. And whether they do it in a tincture, you know, whether they do it in an edible, I have coconut oil infusing right now on my stove. Mm. Um, you know, however they choose to utilize it, it's going to be able to be right for them. They're going to be able to make the decision because they're educated properly. They know the brands, they know the brands to trust. Um, and you know, the, hopefully by that time, the industry will be completely set up where it's a success for everybody the way that it should be. It's a great model. Come on. You know, during communication, as I call it, weed sales kind of skyrocketed. Um, so that, that lets you know something. Um, you know, so yeah, it, um, 
I, I wholeheartedly believe my husband says I sound like a hippie, but I really think cannabis is the answer to a lot of our problems. Yeah. Um, especially social equity wise, um, you know, that, that, that situation. I, I kind of say, I wish we could be like Disneyland, you know, how they pump in all the good smells and we can just pump in, you know, some really good sativa every day. And I think we'd be better. <laughs> I like that. You know, you did, you took me back to high school with the Swisher Sweets and the Backwoods. It's a crazy <laughs> thing. I hadn't thought about those in a long time. I mean, well, saying it made my the, uh, uh, but I do agree with you. I think that, that once people understand that, uh, cannabis as a healing agent can work and we learn more about it different strains uh, also cbd cbg cbn mm -hmm. like you're going to start yeah, yeah. to learn more about how these can help in uh with, with many parts of life whether it's anxiety mm -hmm. whether it's pain whatever that is sleep mm -hmm. better and uh yeah. much more widely adopted as the generations keep going mm -hmm. and as more you know more and more people become um you know creative i mean now we we know they said two or three years ago, the beverage and food industry was going to just burst. That's exactly yeah. what it's doing. You know, we came out with seltzers and they're like, oh, let's go ahead and make a seltzer, you know, with cannabis. Yeah. We infused wine. Um, you know, there have been chefs for a very long time. So I think as we, as everything becomes much more normalized, these opportunities will continue to present themselves. And next thing we know, it's going to be something that, you know, our grandkids are going to be like, you guys did what? You guys thought it was what? You yeah, can't. it'll be like, what was, I mean, it's how we look back at prohibition, you know, in the mm -hmm. 20s, you know, for alcohol, it's just going to be part of normal society. Yeah, definitely. And I think that we will be much more equal as far as education, as far as, you know, income, um, as far as just quality of life. I definitely think that, you know, that's, that's what she's here for. You know, she's, she knows what she's doing, just like most yeah. of us women. <laughs> that's good. Well, the, uh, I know a lot, you do a lot of um, kind of, uh, you know, not only education, but what, what about in terms of representing brands, uh, like a dedicated brand representative mm -hmm. to work through this, not only education, but through understanding the opportunities and responsibility for cannabis companies? Yes. Well, as you can tell, I love to talk. Uh -huh. um, you know, I have great interpersonal skills. And as much as I didn't want to be in corporate sales anymore, that just kind of fell into my lap, you know, brand ambassador position. Um, I was first with Dompen, which I, I love them so much. And I really, i worked with every dispensary in the, in the area, which allowed me to build that, you know, build that network and that community that I have. Um, but I started to see how important my role was. It wasn't just offering a demo. It wasn't just offering a buy one, get one. People yeah. would come in and it was their first time. And it's, you know, people are just, shell shocked. Um, and I would always take the opportunity to talk to them and to share a story that they would be able to relate to. Um, you know, that sales sales background. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it was very um, honest and genuine. And that's what I would get from them is that you've helped me now to become much more comfortable. Um, and you're so passionate about it. And you know, you can't, it's, it's contagious when someone's passionate about something right. and you see the benefit and you understand where they're coming from. Uh, so started with Dom Pen, went over um, Lola Lola, um, and then Old Pal, and then Coronacation happens. Hmm. Um, but everything happens for a reason, and I've always thought about redesigning and redefining brand ambassador. Nothing's wrong with that. But brand ambassador is great for beef jerky, um, you know, Red Bull. Brand educator has so much more responsibility. Yeah. Not just you being at a demo or being at a you know an expo event. It's you actually being that forefront. I can't tell you how many times people said, Don't pin your business. And I'm like, no, 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 not at all. But for them to feel comfortable and them to get the education, you know, right there, hands on, is so important. And you know, anything about business and building a customer base and building that relationship, you have to really find out what their need is and then meet that need and actually exceed it. So I was able to do that in those roles. And I absolutely loved it. I can't tell you, I've never cried so much, you know, um, at a job, meeting people, um, you know, cancer patients. I had a, a vet, you know, who came in and you could tell that he was just in oh. turmoil. And after our hour that he stood at the table with me and we talked, it, I just felt like a weight was lifted off of him. 
Saw him two weeks later, he was in there buying just flour. He knew exactly what he wanted. You know, he knew all the bud tenders names. And I was like, okay, I, I helped with that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's what we need. We need brand educators that are not just, oh, I smoke. Um, you need to understand the importance of the plant and exactly what it can do for our society, what it can do for people's health, and that you are dedicated to that. You're dedicated to getting that, that, uh, you know, that statement out and to get that, that narrative out and then doing it with the company that is doing it right. You know, the green rush, everybody jumped on board, but they're being, you know, kind of weeded out due to regulations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you're with a brand that is doing what it's supposed to do, you know, that the plant is allowed to be as powerful as it is, as it is. And you're just someone that's an advocate for it. So mm -hmm. marketing and advertising, it's changing. Um, especially for cannabis. Like we have to pivot and go a different way than traditional businesses. So utilizing a brand educator is super imperative and it can definitely help to build a lot of success. And then you're building a an employee who's probably going to be long-term and be a huge asset because they understand the brand from the bottom up. Well, the cool, the cool thing about education is you're actually learning yourself. Mm -hmm. because yeah. You're putting information out there and you're, understanding then what the concerns are of the customer the consumer mm -hmm. doesn't know so then you can educate even more yeah. so uh, that's a that's a, a really good way to look at it what you're doing is not ambassador just at a trade show giving out swag yes educator because yeah. you work both ways yeah. it's great so i'm looking for other individuals i am thinking about starting kind of a master class or a training because it is something more than just going ahead and, you know, filling out an application on Indeed and really being charming, setting up your table and spending three hours. Yeah. It's so much more than that. So right. I'm, I'm right. slowly working on that. I like to do so many things at once. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to work everything in, in, in pieces here. Well, but, that, that's, uh, that's a tough thing about this industry. I mean, it's great. There's tons of opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part is that it, there's so much exciting things to do that you really yeah. have to focus and say, this is what I'm going to do this year, you know? And, yeah. Toward it. Yeah, and yeah. I like to say this year because that's how I'm having to work. I'm I'm breaking everything down into the, the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, started the podcast. And I've the podcast is well over a year and a half and it's doing very successful. Um, and then other opportunities are coming up. I will be speaking at the um women in cannabis expo later this year. And I kind of wanted to start doing more public speaking, um, you know, and implementing my education. So like I said, when you just kind of sit back and and let the universe and all of her great, you know, wisdom just handle things, they start happening quickly. Got a comment here from John Thompson. Yeah, education is the key for the industry to advance. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, hundred percent agree with you there, John. Yeah. Well, tell us tell us about your podcast, how people can find that. Then why don't you let people know how to get a hold of you, uh, website, email. And then I'd like to know what you're most excited about uh, this coming year. Okay. So um, my podcast is Menage with the Mary Jane Maven. Um, people go Menage, but you know, Menage just means to, to gather. So like I say at the beginning of every episode, you know, you get, grab your sativa, your indica, your hybrid, your dab, whatever it is, join me and let's go ahead and uh, talk about life elevated. Um, so I provide what's called edutainment kind of, I thought I made it up and then I saw it all over social media. <laughs> yeah. So um, I really want to be able to make people laugh, but have them walk away with, you know, tidbits, just little nuggets. Um, I like to say little hybrid nuggets of, of, you know, of that fire, of that top strain that allows you to feel comfortable in continuing a, a cannabis lifestyle and whatever definition that means to you. Mm. I also like to highlight businesses, um, especially women owned. Um, and, you know, BIPOCs, um, but, you know, anybody that's making a way, especially in Sacramento, you know, mm -hmm. we should be farther along in the cannabis industry, but because we are right here where all the, you know, laws are made, we're behind the Bay Area. We're behind LA. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I want to help others be able to get into the industry and, uh, and help our community just really grow and, and become the powerhouse that it should be. Um, so I, I have the Menage with the Mary Jane Maven podcast. I actually host another podcast based off the TV show, The Boondocks, which I absolutely, it, I learned something from that every single episode. So I love that as well. Um, 
And pretty much where you guys can find me, I am having my website redone. Um, you know, I love to help entrepreneurs, but sometimes that doesn't work out. And so my, my website kind of crashed and someone just told me, um, but you can find me on Instagram and it's at the Mary J Maven. Um, and you can kind of see it spelled a little bit differently. Um, you can find me on Podchaser as well. Podchaser will be a direct link to all the platforms that I'm on. Um, I have an amazing producer who's my hubby. And he did a lot of um, fantastic work and he got me on every single platform that there is. So super excited about that. Um, we are in, a, I think he just counted 18 um, other countries. Oh. And which I, it dry, I mean, every time I'm like, who would listen to me in New Zealand? Like what yeah. would make them click? Um, but we are on YouTube. I, I film live, I record live every Wednesday night. So I do have that, you know, that visual. Um, yep. connection and then like I said we're on all platforms um yeah uh, let's see I think that's I think I showed that there oh email at the Mary Jane Maven at gmail okay so the Mary Jane Maven at gmail.com um but pretty much if you go to my Instagram you'll be able to connect with me right. not even my phone but my Instagram is like my fourth child well <laughs> counting my husband fifth child um so um what I'm most excited about for this year I am, um, I, I didn't think I was going to get into product development, um, but I really, really enjoy, you know, using natural and, and holistic kind of remedies for things. And um, I kind of fell upon a really good intimacy lube um, that I will be releasing later this year. So I'm super excited about that. Um, yeah. And I just being able to be healthy, you know, get through a halfway coronation. I think this is almost over, guys. I think we almost made it. Um, yeah. And just continue to spread a positive word. And like I said, narrative surrounding cannabis and just continue to see people, you know, have that same little light bulb um, that I had six years ago now and, you know, live a much better life. Well, it's only just begun. There's a world of opportunity and keep up the great work. I'm happy Thank to have you, you on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys.